Welcome to my fourth class about regression. In the previous classes, we have seen how to deal with linear functions, so using the standard least squares algorithm. And then I have explained to you how to use uh, weighted least squares in a combination of local linear models, so using locally weighted regression, so as to solve nonlinear function approximation. But as I told you, there is a third family, which is the one uh, at the center of this class, which is using radial basis function networks. So how does this work? The general idea is, is the following. Imagine you have a set of points which are here. You can see that there is no simple linear function that can approximate the function relating those points the, the, those input to those output, okay? So what we will do is that we will project those points into a different space where the relationship between the input and the output is linear. And then if we want to visualize the function, then we have to project backward into the input space and see that in fact, this function when projected back to the input space is this particular nonlinear function. Okay, so what we do in that case is that if we want to approximate a function that is not linear, we project the nonlinear function to a different space where the latent function itself is linear, and then we project backward to visualize. And the general form of this model is as follows. We have some basis functions which are represented here multiplied by a weight and then we make the sum of uh, the basis function multiplied by the weight and this gives you our function approximation okay we will have a look at this in more details now first let's look at a simple example to really understand the idea so imagine that the function we want to approximate we don't know it but the function we want to approximate is this function of x1 and x2 okay and here you have some desired value for for x1 for instance okay so we, we have to define some features in the input space, so over x1 and x2. So we have two features, phi1 and phi2. And we want to look for the weights of these basis functions and such that our model of the latent function, f hat of x1, x2, is the sum over the different basis function of the weights time the features so we have a linear combination of the features this is why we this is a linear projection into the in, in into the basis function domain so let's consider that this is the function we want to approximate one thing we can do which is very simple is to take phi1 is just x1 and phi2 is just x2 so we don't project at all in fact phi1 phi2 is x1 x2 so that's the same domain in that case the best function we can find with a linear combination is w x w1 x1 plus w2 x2 so you can see that this is a linear model this is what you get here so you cannot get a get a good approximation of this function okay this is a very poor linear approximation now imagine that we are much more lucky and that we take phi1 is this and phi2 is this okay then our uh, approximation our regression function is w1 times the feature plus w2 times this feature okay and you can see that if we take w1 is 1 and w2 is 1 then the function is this which is exactly the function we are willing to approximate so in that case we get a perfect approximation of that function okay so you can see that having good features is critical because if you have the perfect features you can get a perfect approximation in general you don't know what are the perfect features so you will have to take something uh, which is general purpose so what we take in general is gaussian functions and you can see that in fact you will pave the input space with gaussian functions and the more gaussian functions so feature function or basis function this is the same the more you of this function you take the better will be the approximation and you will see that your function will consist in having those basis functions multiplied by your weight and you will tune the weights so that you approximate the function you are looking for but the point is that the more features you take the more expensive is the computation because in fact uh, you will have to you to you to use matrices as we will see where you have the number of weights uh, in the number of rows and the number of columns okay and you, we will we will want to invert those uh, 
uh, matrices. And okay, what's important is that all the following algorithms that I will explain to you now use the structure where you have a set of basis function, a set of weights, and the function that you want to approximate is the linear combination of the weights times the basis functions. Our first algorithm in this class will be the kernel ridge regression algorithm, so KAR, which is also called kernel regularized least squares. The idea is that I told you in a previous class, ridge regression is regularized least squares, so that's the same. So what do we do with this algorithm? We, first, as we said, we have to define a set of features. What we do is that we define a kernel function, uh, which takes some distance between two points, and a very standard kernel function is the Gaussian function. Okay, And then we have a batch of points, x1 to xn, and what we will do is that we will define a kernel for I the distance between each of those batch uh, elements. So we define the gram matrix as the kernel matrix as follows. So we have k of x1, x1 to k of xn, xn with each distance between two points. And as you can see, of course, this matrix is uh, symmetric since the distance between one point and the other one is itself symmetric. So once we have defined this matrix of basis functions, what we have to do is just to apply standard linear regression technique. In that particular case, we, we use regularized linear uh, least square. So we use, we use ridge regression. And the formula to get the optimal weights uh, for each basis function is the following. Okay, that's, so that's very simple. This is just applying linear least squares in the case where you have a matrix to project from the input space to the space where the model is linear. The point with this algorithm is that we have one dimension in the matrix per data point in our batch. So the kernel matrix K grows with the number of such data points. This is called kernel expansion. And since we have to invert that particular matrix, this matrix inversion may become too expensive when the matrix goes too large because matrix inversion is cubic in the number of dimensions. So we will see later on in a few slides that a different solution consists in, instead of having one basis function per data point, or having a number of dimensions depending on the number of data points, is to have a fixed number of basis functions. That will be radial basis function networks. We'll see this later on. Uh, and this will uh, give rise to also incremental methods to compute the optimal weights. But let's first focus on this algorithm. A different algorithm from the same family is Gaussian process regression. That's this one, okay? So here, this is very similar to kernel ridge regression, as we will see later on. But the idea is that we add some information about the uncertainty about regression. So we consider that the output y is sampled from a multivariate Gaussian depending on the input x, okay? So the idea is that you don't know in the beginning where is the output, so you give some interval of values, and each time you add a new sample, you reduce the uncertainty um, about the output given uh, some input by using a kernel function that relates the value at that point to the value at that point, for instance. Okay. Uh, I won't go into the mathematical details, but I will show you very quickly that, in fact, the way you estimate the mean is in a formula which is standard when we are, we are using linear least squares. And we also um, compute a variance, which is the additional information with respect to kernel regularized least squares. So I'm just, I will just show you one slide to show you that it's similar to kernel ridge regression. That's the slide. So that's better explained in this paper that you should read if you want to have the details of the uh, comparison between Gaussian process regression and kernel ridge regression. But the general idea is that uh, this term k only depends of your batch of data points, okay? So it's not depending on any novel input x, okay? Uh, so you can compact 
this matrix times this vector that you already know uh, into one weight vector okay that we will uh, call theta star and we get theta star is k minus one uh, uh, times y okay and after a simple calculation you can show that in fact the way you compute um, the output given some input exactly corresponds to the formula of uh, kernel range regression so that's the same with gaussian process regression and kernel range regression okay i i urge you to have a look at that paper because the explanation is much clearer there okay. uh, so the idea is that kernel range regression computes a regularized version of the weights whereas gaussian process regression use a non-regularized you don't have the lambda times identity term in this particular formula so there is a small difference here so as i told you when you are using kernel range regression or gaussian process regression the point is that we get a big matrix that grows with the number of match samples okay and um, this is a pity because you have to invert that matrix and this is cubic in the number of dimensions of the matrix so what you can do is instead of using a uh, gram matrix with kernels you use radial basis functions and you just take a finite set of such functions so we here we take e elements okay and one interesting point is that a Gaussian function is both a kernel function and a radial basis function so you can use the same algorithms with Gaussians in the first and the second family so we define a set of e basis functions which are often Gaussian function and the way to compute the optimal weight will be using the standard formula of uh, regression for projection that I told you in the beginning of this class so we can define the gram matrix which is similar to the one that we had with as a kernel matrix but instead of having uh, x1 x1 etc and xn xn here we just have a finite set of columns with just e columns corresponding to the e basis function that we are using okay and after calculation which is exactly the same as before we get the least square solution this way and this time the formula is a little more complicated because the gram matrix in that particular case is not necessarily symmetric so this one does not uh, cannot be simplified a third family of algorithms uh, in, the, in the same family as the, in this class is incremental receptive field regularized least square the idea is exactly the same as before but instead of using Gaussians we are using cosine and sine functions and the very particularity of those functions is that they are not local okay so instead of having one feature to cover a particular receptive field in the domain of the function that you want to approximate here when you change the weight of a particular function you will change the, func the global approximated function everywhere okay so this is in fact very close to approximating a function through its Fourier transform where you just f want to find the weights of the different sine or cosine functions that you are using okay um, and one very good thing about this ERF RLS algorithm is that it has very few hyperparameters so it's easy to tune okay and also it is interesting to use it uh, when you are trying to model to, to approximate the models of robots because the model of robots often uh, imply some cosine and sine terms uh, because there is some geometry between the joints of the robot and okay so there, there is this ERF RLS and there is also ESS GPR which is more or less the same as this one but based on Gaussian process regression as, and as I told you Gaussian process regression is very similar to kernel rich regression so that's more or less the same algorithm so to summarize in the linear case you have the formula um, that I've shown you in the second class with the standard case and the regular case okay in the case of rbfn you don't use the regularization so you have a formula which is similar to the first one but you are using a gram matrix instead of just the design matrix uh, taking just uh, the input okay and in the kernel regularized li uh, least squares uh, 
you have this formula and if you are using Gaussian process regression you remove the regularization term and you just have this formula so here you have a summary of all the way to compute the optimal weight depending on the algorithm from this family finally a little uh, table that tells you uh, how to organize these different algorithms so with rbfn kernel regularized least squares irfrls and ess gpr you can see that they are regularized where, whereas gpr is not okay may uh, maybe that there is a mistake here because this is based on gpr so maybe that's not regularized uh, then the number of basis function in the case of Kerrer and uh, Gaussian process regression corresponds to the number of the points in your batch whereas in those three algorithms this is just a constant that you set by hand okay and then the, you use different f features so in the rbf and this is rbf here this is kernels but gaussians are both rbf and kernels okay and in those two algorithms you rather use cosine uh, basis functions which are not local so that's the broad picture about all these algorithms so now let's have a look at a different set of feature functions which are neural network in fact neural network also are feature function but organized a little differently so first let's consider the case where you have a neural network with just one hidden layer and here you have some basis functions in fact if the output is just a linear combination of the output of the, f the hidden layer what you get here is just a linear combination so a linear model so this is exactly doing some linear least squares in the space projecting into this basis function so in fact a uh, neural network is doing exactly what i described so far which is projecting through basis function into a different space and then using uh, linear least squares so as to find the output given the projected input so that's the same structure as all basis function network. The point is that instead of using Gaussians or cosine functions, here we are using standard sigmoids or tangent, uh, hyperbolic tangent functions or eventually uh, rectified linear units. Okay, so doing this is nice because you just, you, if you use a sigmoid, for instance, you just split the space into two parts. One part where you have a low output and one part where you have high output so you better split the space when you have a higher dimension so it's easier to use a neural network where your space is very very large okay and the different point is that in fact if you are tuning the weights that are here in fact you are tuning the basis functions what i show you here is, the, is for instance here i am using a cosine if my weights is one then the function between the output the input and the output of this cosine sigmoid unit is the following but if i change my weight into minus one this consists in inverting uh, this function that way and here i am also adding some bias so it's shifted in that particular way and here i am using a different weight so for instance one half and using a different shift so you can see but that by just changing the weights before those sigmoid units and using some bias I can completely change the basis function that I am using and the general idea of using um, neural network with several layers is that at the last layer the basis function that you obtain are learned through um, the retropropagation of the gradient so that you find the adequate basis functions so as to get some linear approximation uh, at the output of your network Okay. and one idea is that when you are using a deep neural network versus a shallow network you get more tunable features with less parameters in fact when you have several layers you combine the functions so you can get more and more complicated uh, basis functions at the layer of the output uh, so you can better adjust to your data so as to perform a linear com uh, least square in the end one point is that when you have those several layers you cannot perform uh, batch linear regression in the end you have to use incremental methods because you are tuning the weights at the same time as performing the linear combination so those incremental methods will be presented in the next classes uh, just after this one
Uh, let's say also that you can have different variants of way of performing regression with uh, neural networks. For instance, you can set those weights once and for all. So consider that the biases functions are fixed and then you just tune those weights. This is called extreme machine learning and it performs quite well. Okay, So you don't use the retropropagation of the gradient in that particular case. Also, what you can do is to perform stochastic optimization of those intermediate weights and just linear regression on the output weights. And this should perform well because stochastic optimization would consist in looking for adequate basis functions and then you just perform the linear regression. So you, you don't need to use the retropropagation of the gradient to tune a neural network to perform a particular regression. That's the reference about extreme machine learning. Uh, finally, a uh, final word to tell you that in the last two classes, this one and the one before, I presented to you two different ways to perform regression. One was locally weighted regression and one is using radial basis function networks. Okay. In the case of radial basis function network, the way to approximate is this. Okay. And in the case on, uh, of linear uh, locally weighted regression, sorry, this is this. And you can see that in fact, this model is a particular mod uh, case of this one where a is equal to zero. Okay. So in fact, what's quite interesting is that radial basis function network can be um, modeled using the same model as linear locally weighted regression, whereas the two algorithms are completely different. In this one, you split your domain into many different subdomains and you perform one linear regression per domain, where here you project just into one domain and you just perform one linear regression. So the algorithms are completely different, but the underlying model is very, very similar. Okay. So you can provide a, a framework for implementing regression where you are just using this model. And when you want to uh, perform radial basis function network, you just have a specific implementation of that model. Uh, a specialization of that model for that particular class of alg algorithm. Again, have a look at our paper with Frick Stulp where this is uh, well explained and you will also in the paper find a pointer to a library where you can perform those kinds of uh, regression efficiently in C++. So to finally to summarize all what I said about those regression methods, you have first the linear least squares where you just want to fit a line to some data points. Okay. Then you have weighted with least squares where you say that the central data points are more important than the one on, on the extremes. Okay. And then you have locally weighted regression where you s perform multiple such weighted least squares in the input space. Whereas in radial basis function networks, you project your data in your fit to space and you do just one least square regression in that particular uh, projected space. Okay. Uh, okay. And finally, a few take home messages for the particular case of robot model learning. Okay, let's first say that the algorithm that I have presented to you here, apart from neural networks, are mostly used in robotics to uh, approximate the model, the kinematics or dynamics model of the robot because in the case where you perform regression for different things, more generally you are using ne neural networks and particularly since the beginning of deep neural networks because deep neural networks are more accurate uh, at performing those approximations. So, but to summarize, so you have two families of methods, one which is locally weighted regression, so where you have a linear model per domain and each domain is represented as the Gaussian and, and you perform this approximation. And the other one is radial basis function network where you just make a weighted sum of the basis functions uh, into the projected domain. And a few who algorithms that you can remember about. One is ESS GPR, which is easy to tune and that has no overfitting, which, so it's quite good at approximating models of robots. LWPR is maybe the reference method, but everybody writes a paper to say that they do better than LWPR, so LWPR does not uh, do that well. And the idea is that it benefits from a, an available fast implementation. This is why roboticists use it when they don't know about the algorithms that I have told you about. 
XCSF is interesting because it distinguishes the Gaussian weight space and the linear model space. And it's also more adaptive because it can remove some receptive field to replace them with other ones uh, when they are more accurate. And finally, Gaussian mixture regression is the richest representation and it can provide a quite accurate approximation with very few features, which make it uh, interesting when you don't have much memory, so you need a lightweight model. A different paper that you may have a look at is this one, where those algorithms are presented in the particular case of learning mechanical models of robots. And that's it for today. Thank you for listening.